Hello everybody, this is Simon with Let's Play Mega Man 7. Today it should not come as much of a surprise which stage we are going to tackle because there is only one left, so let's jump up and down and enjoy like in the stage itself to visit beautiful Springman's beautiful Boyoyoing Paradise, the only Japanese title of the stage which I have known before starting this let's play because it's just so much fun. I read it somewhere and it burned itself into my brain and Boyoyoing we are going to do to reach this enticing bold power up. These springs work pretty much like they would in a Mario game and you get a very nice uh, automatic tutorial because you want to reach that boat, right? And you have to hold down the button so that you jump high and if you don't then you just bounce around a little bit, which is immediately tested on this screen around enemies, all of which are a one-hit kill in this entire stage with my favorite weapon, the Slash Claw, because I just like melee weapons so much and this is a perfect playground for this weapon to take out everything in one hit at least if you hit them squarely in the middle because if you only hit with the tip of the uh, weapon then you don't kill them in one hit which is a little bit annoying but it's just I'm gonna call it skill based uh weapon usage. Anyway, um, the entire stage is built around this one gimmick of bouncing springs and uh, I really like that because you usually don't see that in Mega Man 7 but here it just builds on the gimmick uh, continuously. It starts with just assisting you on the bottom then you have these on the top where you're like okay you get bounced downwards it might be really bad and then later on we're going to see an entire room with springs everywhere on the side, on the ceiling, on the bottom, different types of springs and an extra gimmick added in to make it really freeform exploration. It's really nice. Here, obviously, I've been told that um, somewhere on the internet the lit up star means that um, you, there is a secret here but if you paid close attention there are lit and unlit stars in succession everywhere in the background of this stage so that's not a hint. Um, anyway what we get for that is the only large energy capsule in the entire game and um, I don't know, it's just there for fun. It doesn't really matter too much. You get healed fully, yes, that's cool, but the stage isn't that difficult. I think it's just a gag. And directly afterwards you get another Mega Bolt, that's nice. Uh, we're going to go shopping soon, I feel like, because uh, we are going to find something that helps us shopping. But first, let's explore the big, big room that I mentioned beforehand. Let's try a freeze cracker. Oh, I still don't like where it, the projectile originates. Anyway, let's not Get, go with Freeze Cracker anymore. Let's use a, a good weapon. This bottom right corner of the room feels a little bit like a punishment zone because there is no real good way to get on to the top unless you're using the rush adapter. So you, what you really want to do is circle back up around here and um, then go on the left uh, middle and then go over the top. However, to the top left there is an optional zone where there is a secret. And this secret is rather interestingly hidden. I really like it, but first we have to solve a little bit of a spring jumping puzzle. That's your final exam if you understand the springs. Um, the sideways springs, they will bounce you up if you hold the button, like uh, straight up, like, like so. So you can't hold the button. You have to slowly go without holding the button into it, then repress it in the air while you have the momentum so that you bounce high to the left. If that sounds too complicated for you, then just don't and use the rush adapter. But I wanted to show off how it works, it's really cool, I, I do like it. And this is one of my favorite secrets in the entire game, because it's an actual secret you can figure out, it's a puzzle, it's not just an unmarked spot on the floor. The boxing glove things, they turn if you jump on them. You have seen that before in this room, almost inevitably, and the wall to the side looks weird, right? So why not try to punch out the wall, it makes perfect sense, and the wall even lands on the spikes giving you a convenient platform to get to the mega bolt which is what also is missing as I said for the shop it's really nice I really like that secret and up here you can get another e-tank so this stage is just chock full of goodies it's a very very good stage to load up on you can tackle this early you can come back to it and get more stuff it's just really nice to play Anyway, as I said, the adapter helps a lot. Uh, if you flub a few jumps, then you can use these platforms here, which otherwise don't really have a use. Like I feel all the bottom right side of the screen is only accessible if you use some flying implement. And this is rude. Like I always get hit by this off-screen punching glove that always comes out at the time where you just reach it and you can't see it. Um, but uh, because you can't just tank the damage through it, I have actually never taken the 
actually completely intended path here, which, you know, it's like, bear with me. Anyway, final Slash Claw use. Yeah, Sniper Chosa also weak to Slash Claw. Um, it's funny, isn't it? They are just so pathetic in this game, which I don't mind. They're really annoying in other games. Anyway, um, let's see what happens if we energize a spring. Oh, due to induction, it creates a magnetic field. We have learned something about physics today. It's really cool. Spring Man is a very fun boss. I really like this boss and it's a, such a breath of fresh air after the awful Slash Man. Spring Man only has two attacks. He jumps up and uses his, uh, well, springy arms and he generates springs to the side, which is incidentally what we'll get from him. And these two attacks are the only thing he really needs to make a very interesting and dynamic fight, because as the springs jump around, you tend to get distracted from his other attacks. You have to handle dodging the springs and himself as well, see, distracted. And um, the springs themselves, they can be taken out, so you really want to micromanage them, but you can easily get overwhelmed, as you can see here. As I've mentioned before, I do like leaving in a few deaths nowadays just for authenticity. I don't do everything first try. I, I sometimes struggle a little bit and if you do this stage for the first time you would also have to try the fight, see what the boss even does, figure out how to safely attack it and then in the end you can pull off a good victory against him even if you don't have the weakness like I do obviously but um, we are going to show off the whole fight again just how it works. And uh, in general what I also really like is that he never corners you, like he will always make the springs in the middle of the room after his big jump attack, so you can never just eat a spring to the face, but however you should still not get too close to him because he can grab you and deal you a lot of damage. Um, the extendo fists are pretty easy to dodge, like uh, I think seeing the animation and reacting to it with the slide is pretty trivial, um, no offense if you get hit by it all the time, um, but that doesn't mean that you should lose your guard because it deals a lot of damage as I said and overall um, you have to really be on your toes with the springs which by the way really cool design as well 2 HP so either you busted them down real quick or one charge shot and you have lots of opportunities to charge up while you're dodging so it actually makes the charge shot even in its nerf form quite worthwhile really cool Wild Coil, I sadly don't have that much experience with. I tend to do Springman late because I want to use Slashman's weapon and for Slashman you want to have Scorch Wheel and so on. Um, and also it's not that exciting. Like it's the requisite joke weapon of the game. I know that for a fact because it's the weakness of the final boss. Ah, we've had that a few times. Um, but I don't think it's bad and I'm going to try to find a bunch of uses for it. But at the moment I can't say, oh yeah, Wild Coil, I really love this one, especially in this and that stage. At some point I should get it earlier and then and do some other stages with it but uh, to be quite honest it's not that exciting it's it's nice for like crowd control because it shoots out two springs like springman did so that's that's nice anyway cutscene uh, by the way uh, big betrayal nobody saw that coming especially not after i spoiled in the first episode but base is a bad guy hmm. and as i said if you do st shade man last in the boss order uh, he can be sent to the lab and then immediately after you kill shade man uh, Light says, oh yeah, I upgraded him by the way, and now he betrayed me, and Mega Man's like, I was gone for five minutes? <laughs> like, how long does the boss fight take? So that's a bit weird. Um, but uh, yeah, all that weirdness aside, I don't think this is like a bad twist or anything, it's, it's fine uh, for uh, the, the time and the kind of game this is, of course. And it is kind of shocking to see the lab actively attack the destroy. we didn't really have that before. Um, and uh, then now it also has an interesting gameplay story integration, because Base was really pathetic in the intro, and he maybe he held back but I think it just wasn't that good but now that Dr. Light has upgraded him he's actually going to be a relevant threat as a boss fight in the Wily stages which we are going to tackle soon after a bit of shopping not today though because I have a little bit of an extra footage for you first of all let's do this again um, just to show off that yes I can do it this took me like uh, three whole minutes to redo um, and I just want to show off that you can in fact 
do this entire stage with only the Slash Claw. The first half we've already seen with only the Slash Claw, so just believe me that I didn't switch to Rush Surge. And here, um, this is not that hard. Low bounce, high bounce, and then you don't get spiked uh, in the ceiling to do without the, the Rush Jet Adapter. Going up here, as I said, just hold up and for some reason the springs will bounce you up instead of letting you drop and pushing you to the side. This makes no sense, but whatever. And here you can do this jump without the rush adapter, it's just tight. Uh, you have to do a slight jump, I'm pretty sure, or inch to the very edge and then do the pixel perfect jump. Uh, down here, there is not much to do for the slash claw, sadly, because as I've said, uh, you can't really get out of here without... Um, a rush adapter unless you go to the left and then restart the whole process but you can absolutely just kill these things with slash claw it's also another enemy that just gets killed immediately it's a little bit awkward because you know they are floating but it works and you can co do cool dodges like that you can also flub it and, and you have to redo it but in general we are doing this for fun right bouncing is fun and using the slash claw is also a lot of fun so let's do that and uh, as I said before, going up here to the left, you want to jump high logically and then you immediately get hit. So yeah, once again, I don't know what's to the left. <laughs> Eventually I might find out, but it doesn't really matter. And uh, yeah, I keep getting hit by stray bullets here. So um, spoilers for nothing that I will show off, but I will not actually win the, <laughs> the fight against uh, Springman, but doesn't matter here. Um, I was just a little bit impatient here, just wanted to go through, you know, keep up the gameplay flow. I haven't really said that that much in the let's play but going through the stage with slash claw amazing flow you just go and go and go and everything is a one button kill while you are moving that's great and i do want to show off what the slash claw can do which is just you never have the side springs so the fight becomes extremely trivial we're going to see that in the refights of course but while i have it yeah you can absolutely also keep doing that and now for something completely different while i'm here uh, a very fun thing that you can do with noise crush i couldn't do that on the first time because i'm not like a speedrunner but you can fire this while you're going through the boss door and the boss starts with no hp and as it ticks up he gets hit and it erases the health bar before it can even form and you immediately kill him i think that's the last time we can do that because i don't think this works in the refights so i needed to show it off now thank you very much for your attention <laughs> 